Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of our new podcast. I don't believe in side quests. <laughs> As you can see, we're both really excited. Uh, my name is Gabe, also known as Nenya on Twitch, and this is my co-host, Sweet. Oh gosh, Lauren, also known as Sweetie, <laughs> on Twitch. Um, it's an adjustment. I know it's. It weird. is. Yeah, yeah. That's why I kind of I wanted to mention them, like in case we, you know interchange them i feel like we're gonna try to use gabe and lauren but in case we use the other ones then we'll know um kind of what we were thinking a typical podcast you know for us would be is like or an episode would be like you know an intro kind of talking about our days maybe things that have been going on and then kind of going into a main topic and then kind of ending with some local drama and kind of like a recap of everything yeah so basically we're streamers <laughs> we're friends um, we are going to be talking about games, we're going to be talking about technology, life updates, whatever else truly springs into our little brains. Yes. Hi, I'm Lauren, also known as Sweetie Patat, on Twitch. I started streaming on Twitch in October of 2020. The pandemic had hit, my fiancé and I were just home all the time, not going out. Uh, my social life up till then had been going, you know, out to theater to plays getting drinks with my friends and so i was so lonely and idaho my fiance also known as mike um he streams under idaho but um he was used to playing games with his friends remotely because mm -hmm. a group of his friends were back home where he was from and so he just had that community that was already kind of preset. So when the pandemic hit, yes, absolutely. He was sad. He didn't get to see friends in person, but he did have the ability that was already set up and already created that he could just play games with them, talk with them on discord. And I didn't have any of that built out. None of my friends, um, played games really. Mm -hmm. And so I was just so lonely and just so jealous that he was able to still maintain that sort of social um interaction and um he also was watching twitch and i had really never watched twitch before and so he was watching it and that kind of introduced me to twitch and i started finding streamers especially female streamers who i was really kind of connecting to and it definitely kind of broadened my idea of, oh, hold on, I could do this and I could meet people this way and this could be a way for me to get social interaction as well. Uh, so I was really drawn to that idea of streaming and I started streaming Stardew Valley. We built me a gaming computer. Again, this is back in October of 2020. 20. Yep, yep, yep. I know what year it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> But I didn't have a concept of my channel. I didn't know what I wanted to play. I didn't know what kind of people I wanted to connect to. Um, I started playing the Nancy Drew games off stream in just kind of a fit of nostalgia. I just didn't know what I wanted to play. They just seemed so comforting to me. And I was about to play Treasure in the Royal Tower as part of my playthrough. And my sister wanted to watch me stream those just because they were really important to our childhood. And yeah. that night, the first night that I started streaming Nancy Drew, I just joined a community of Nancy Drew streamers. And I was not expecting that. I wasn't expecting a lot of people to be out playing it. I wasn't expecting so many people to still love all of those games. Um, and I found some of the people who I've truly spent <laughs> so much time with in the past year. Um, basically people who I've spent uh, the most time with other than my fiance. And Gabe rated me. Did we decide it was my second ever Nancy stream? I think it was because it, yeah. it was the Royal uh, Tower, Treasure in the Royal yeah. Tower. I remember because I love that one. And I was like, oh, she's playing Treasure in the Royal Tower. <laughs> Dan was like, yeah. oh. the universe is like okay let's just expedite this friendship let's just mm -hmm. not waste any time <laughs> let's get it going and so yeah a year later we are here starting up this podcast 
which is so yeah, crazy. literally. <laughs> our our friend anniversary gift to each other. Let's make a baby and start a podcast. I mean, it was like two days Yay. early, but like you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. Since you talked about your streaming, I guess I'll talk a bit about mine. I've been on Twitch for like a long time, a long time. So like my account that I use now, Ninja Adamas, has I think I mean like 2016, but I was on mm-hmm. Twitch a little bit before that. Just, uh, I guess the main reason was like, you only have so much money, right? Like you can't buy mm. every single game, but there's yeah. so many games. Where you're like, oh, I really want to play that. I really. So I joined Twitch heavily to be able to watch a wide variety of games I couldn't play, but like really mm. wanted to and wanted to see. And then I stayed on Twitch because I loved the interactions you could have with someone, and it was like really nostalgic to um so i also played nancy drew when i was a child and like i would always play it with a friend and we'd always be like doing it together and gaming together and you know so like twitch always feels like that you know you're experiencing something with other people you're thinking about things with other people and i really love that so that was like what kept me on twitch and then i don't really know why i made nenya it was kind of like I don't like my old usernames. I don't feel like they were me. They were just mm-hmm. like, you know. And so, <laughs> you can ask one of my best friends. I spent like four hours trying to figure out what I was going to do, how I was going to make it, or like what it was going to be, the meaning behind the name. <laughs> okay, and so like, you've always been like marketing. All about I re- the brand. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, because I was like, this is what people are going to know me as. Like, I don't want to mm-hmm. switch it. I don't want to have to switch it. And I was like, so I have to, mm. like, think about it. Mm-hmm. And so, Nenya is uh, Galadriel's ring from Lord of the Rings. I'm a super big nerd. I freaking love the Lord of the Rings. And it, the ring is also known as the Ring of Adamant, uh, the Ring of Water. I also really love water, which is partially why I chose it, but I also liked how the name sound. And so the Adamus or Adamus is a uh, Latin for adamant because Twitch is like you need a first name and a last name and I was like I'll give you a first name and a last name. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So where did the dragons come from? Because dragons are a big element of your stream. They're my favorite thing in the whole world and have been for my entire life. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, I looked at like what everyone was doing and like back then there wasn't a lot of dragon stuff and i was like you know what Mm -hmm. that's me and like (laughs) taking i have (laughs) dragon stuff everywhere like everywhere like i have statues and everything and i was like you know what (laughs) makes sense so yeah i love that and i didn't really make it thinking i was gonna stream but like i thought about those things in the back of my head and then I probably started streaming like March 2016 or something like that because my friends were like, oh, you got this game. Like, will you stream it? Mm. I was like, sure. Uh, What game is it? Do you remember? (sighs) I know Astroneer was one of the first games I streamed, but Mm. I don't think it was the first. I don't know. Was it Conan? No, I think it was Arc Age. Oh, it was Arc Age. It was when Arc Age re No, no, that's not it. Is that what it was? I have no idea. I don't know. There was a lot of things. But that was like. I'll solve that mystery later. Yeah, one day. So, (laughs) yeah. I don't know. And then, I don't know. I don't really know why I kept streaming. I just did. And here we are. (laughs) I just. uh, It's like escapism. Like, gaming is escapism. Streaming's escapism. It makes me, like, not have to think about things. It's very comforting. You can talk to other people. Well, and I think it's just so exciting because every different game you play has different fans. Yeah. And if you're playing lesser-known games, and so you're getting people who are like, oh my gosh, somebody else is playing this game. And then you get to meet new people and learn about them and learn about the type of people even if it's a game that you just picked up randomly or was yep. randomly recommended it and you're like huh i guess i'll play this game and these super fans just come running out and they're like oh my gosh this is the best game ever that's what happened last night i started playing well you rated me i started playing the <laughs> secret of monkey island 
Mm -hmm. uh, because the new one's coming out this year. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I want to, something I've had on my list. We'll try and get through the series and be ready for that new one. And all these fans were like, <laughs> someone's playing Monkey Island. Someone's playing Monkey Island. And I felt bad because they kept making all these references. Like they'd come in and their first line was like a reference that went over my head. Because I was like, oh, <laughs> this is my first time playing. Um... <laughs> But yeah, that's always fun. That is always a good time. I think that's like my favorite, one of my favorite parts about playing the more niche games mm -hmm. is getting those types of people. And then mm -hmm. you learn so much more about the game that you might never have known because they love it. And they're like, let me tell you. Yeah, I'm so obsessed with the type of people who love to watch people's first playthroughs of a game yeah. that they love. Yes. It's my favorite thing when they come in and they're just... You know, just so, just quivering in anticipation for you to get to their favorite part or see the shock yeah. on your face. It's a way to relive their own shock and yes. um, excitement. Anytime you've been like, I wish I could read that book for the first time or watch that movie for the first time. On yep. Twitch, you can watch people play a game the first time and, yeah, just be knocked out by it. You can relive <laughs> it. You can relive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. When you first rated me uh, for Nancy Drew, um, when we first met, you were playing mm -hmm. through all of the Nancy Drews uh, in a series, right? Oh. Yeah, that was my, my second run through. So the first time, I was like, there's at that point, there's very few Nancy Drews I hadn't played yet. I'd played pretty much all of them. But I was like, I want to play them in order. I want to see how they all connect, how it all builds in preparation for, I was going to call it Town of Salem, but that's a different game. It was Midnight, Midnight in Salem. But yeah, when that first came out. Yeah. So I was, yeah, I was like playing through them all. And man, we were like, we were on <laughs> the grind in like the last <laughs> month trying to get through them all. And then... Cause sorry, were you playing them all in one year? Yeah, sorry, you're... yeah, yeah. I played. I think I played through. I'm trying to think. Did Midnight in Salem come out in October or November? Or was it December? I think it was October. I feel like it was October. I've I played through them in like a four or five month period. I was like, oh shoot, the new one's coming out. I'm gonna do it. And we did it somehow. I don't know how. And, um, yeah, Twitch only keeps your VODs for so long, and I didn't know you could, like, download your VODs at that time. Mm. And I was, I was, like, devastated. I was like, man, I wish I would have kept these. So then mm -hmm. when I rated you, I was working through my second playthrough, which I still am working on, of going through them in order, because I wanted to... Uh, keep them, keep the Vaz, and be able to, like, put them on YouTube to be able to look at them later, and, like, <gasps> and then I was, like, oh, I also want to make the scrapbook that Nancy made. Like, I want to remake that, and I want to do all these things, so. Yeah, we were playing, oh, we talked about this earlier. I don't remember what I was on. I was on, like, the fifth one or something like that, I think, when I had rated you. Or maybe, like, the mm. third or fourth. Gotcha. And, yeah, I was trying to spread the Nancy Drew love because there's, there used to be, like, not a lot of people who streamed it. Or if they did stream it, they sh they streamed the Shadow at the Water's Edge. That was, like, the super popular one. And I was like, mm -hmm. you're not real Nancy fans. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, to see someone playing one of those and one of my favorite games, I was like, we're going to spread the love to you. Yeah, because the Nancy games... And now we're friends, now we're BFS. I feel like when even when I first started streaming them, you know, over a year ago, um, there were only, you know, a few people at a time playing. And I feel like either a lot of viewers decided to start streaming because they saw all of the rest of us start streaming Nancy Drew, um, or a lot more streamers just fell back in love with them. So I don't know if it's just a whole bunch of new <laughs> streamers who are streaming Nancy Drew, or if people just made the decision to start. I think it's new streamers. 
like mm-hmm. based off of the people I saw start streaming it and stuff and looking, I think it was new streamers, which I do think in turn also brought back the nostalgia for other people and then brought people mm-hmm. who maybe did already stream and be like, I want to play a Nancy game. And somehow, for some reason, when Midnight in Salem came out, like, it was, like, big. Like, there was quite a few really big streamers who I had never seen play Nancy Drew game before. They were like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play that. I'm gonna stream that. And I was like, okay. And I felt like that also (laughs) helped. Definitely. Yeah, every once in a while there will be, like, a really big streamer or, um, you know, the girlfriend or wife of a really big streamer will be playing a Nancy Drew game for mm-hmm. nostalgia. And it's just like, oh, okay. So that's the person who's yeah. streaming Nancy Drew who has, you know, 10,000 viewers. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, I guess let's talk more about, like, the podcast. Like, why are we making this podcast? What made us, you know, get here and why we did it? Um, So I've been thinking about it and wanting to make a podcast for a while. I feel like I have a lot to say. A lot of things I could say. Maybe a lot of things that could be beneficial to others. But also just like, I don't know, I like being able to nerd out. And uh, I was looking for a partner. Someone, a partner in crime. Because I didn't want to go on this, you know, journey by myself. And like... I don't even know why I was like, sweetie, you want to do a podcast? But like, out of, I, one day, just out of the door, I was like, or sorry, Lauren. <laughs> Lauren, you want to start a <laughs> podcast with me? And you were like, I guess. I mean, why not? <laughs> mm-hmm. And yeah, so, that was exactly I know my kind of my... I mean, I thought I like mimicked you pretty well. But, you know. <laughs> uh, so like my, I guess personal reasons and like kind of what I want to do with the podcast is like you know kind of having a place to be able to vent to be able to talk um since we are like a mainly like gaming kind of podcast to give like the female perspective on gaming and like what it's like to be a female in the gaming culture and maybe making a difference for the better for females (laughs) in the gaming Um, but also just kind of, like, making a difference for people's lives, like, in general, because, like, this kind of content, like, podcasts, streams, all of that is, like, like, listening to people and stuff and their stories, like, it keeps me going, it makes me have hope, it makes me want to do things, and I kind of, I want to give that to other people, too, like, I love that, and I think... Kind of the last big thing is I've always loved learning, learning more things, pushing myself to learn more, and then, you know, spreading that knowledge, you know, like a give and take. I want others to teach me, but I also want to teach others, and I guess, ironically, I am a teacher with preschoolers, so. (laughs) Um, Would you like to share your personal reasons? You know, Fry, you said yes. (laughs) Yeah, I have also thought about uh, participating in uh, co-hosting a podcast for a while. Um, I think it's part of the way that I stream. Um, I definitely love playing the games, but I also love just taking a tangent off and talking about concepts and themes in the storytelling. I uh, spent a lot of time in theater when I was younger and in playwriting classes, and I always loved English. And so I love scripts and I love media and I love building out stories. It's always going to be about this story for me. There's so many, um, and we'll talk about this later in Nancy Drew's segments, but the story is always the key part for me. Because you can have great puzzles in there, but if the story is not, if it doesn't make sense, if it's not clear, if the characters are not developed up to a certain point, then the whole game is going to fall apart. And so um, I spend a lot of time in my streams talking about that and talking about um, how I feel about that and talking about how different concepts have been used better in other areas and other, you know, 
tangents that would be good um, kind of more in a podcast setting necessarily than on stream. They're also fun on stream, but I think it also makes sense to translate them over into this. Well, and doing this, like you can research. Definitely. Definitely. I like doing that research and I like doing um, that kind of investigation, expanding my knowledge and understanding of what's hot in technology and um, talking about the kind of games that are coming out that are maybe not necessarily on my Steam brand but or on my Twitch brand, but mm -hmm. um, that I'm interested in playing and excited to play um, and that we'll be playing not necessarily on Twitch or publicly, but that I'm playing for myself more. And well, it makes sense to do it with you because um, we are friends. We do enjoy playing similar games. I feel we have some different perspectives on different things. You have a much greater knowledge of games and just a longer knowledge of games. Um, so I'm, mm -hmm. uh, I have a lot to learn <laughs> about the gaming, um, history and that sort of thing from you. And I just yeah. love to talk. Aww. So I'm <laughs> very happy to come in and learn and, um, chit chat about whatever. I also feel like, I don't know, like we have really good chemistry and I feel like mm -hmm. we can bounce back and forth off each other. And I feel like we can have, I keep saying I feel like that's terrible, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a safe environment. I feel I can really say my thoughts and opinion, and even if you disagree, you're not just going to be like, you little sh poop, how dare you, <laughs> how dare you think that way, and I'm like, I'm sorry, please don't I be I promise I will not call you so, a poop. So, yeah. <laughs> Oh, sorry. You can use the actual word, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, no. no, there's definitely that level of comfort and yeah. support with us. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why <laughs> why we started it. <laughs> but why did we name it what we named it? And I'm not going to take any credit for that. That was all <laughs> you. All the names I came up with, like <laughs> such basic basic beach bland names like i had i had nothing you had a couple of sweeties which was very nice <laughs> i th i mean i don't know if it, it, well, it was cute but you definitely hit it on the nail when you were like or the nail on the head when you were like uh we should probably get something that's like more pointed to like what we would be mm. talking about or at least kind of like the topic we'd be covering and mm -hmm. I was like hey, yeah you're kind of right <laughs> so yeah so as you can tell our podcast is called I don't believe in side quests so um there there's some there's some reasons behind this right so just at a basic level as the main character in your own story you have an ultimate objective so it's saving a princess, finding treasures, defeating final bosses. Uh, these are obviously typically in games, although I suppose it could be true in real life as well. Um, but we all have these ultimate goals. We have series of tasks we have to accomplish that are gonna actively move us closer to achieving those goals. So this is our quote unquote main quest. And then along the way to those own goals, we run into other characters or are given um, you know, a note in passing, or we are somehow directed to um, other people's objectives. And so we can jump in to help those other characters rescue their own princesses or find their own treasures or defeat their own bosses. And these quote unquote side quests do not directly move our own story along. They're super optional for us to join in. So the I don't believe in side quests concept has kind of two main parts. So part one is basically we are all side characters in each other's stories. So it's not that we're just embarking on petty little side quests. We have agreed to briefly step into someone else's story as a helper. Out of the goodness of our hearts or the desire for a really good reward, we have stepped back from that main character spotlight and we are willing to take a supporting role so someone else can achieve their ultimate goal. Um, second, and 
personally, I feel is the more important part of this reframing of side quests is that we learn so much when we spend the time helping other people. In games, we're going to gain experience, gold, or unique weapons that may not be super important plot plot point wise, but they do pave the way for our success later on in the game. And then in life, we're learning about how other people are seeing the world, what they're finding important, and that may change our perspective. And then also that way paves the way for our success later in life. So the game or (laughs) our parents may see us pause or veer off the linear path to our otherwise stated ultimate goal and think we're wasting time, but they aren't taking into consideration the fact that most of us can't tackle our ultimate object head on as fast as possible. Like most of us can't just say, okay, I'm just gonna follow the main quest points and fight the ultimate boss. We need to take these side quests to get experience. We need to get better weapons. We need to um, gain broader skills. And so calling those side quests is just, um, it just seems silly because even though they're not necessarily actively moving the plot along, they're still super important and integral to our growth as characters and also as people. So kind of, (laughs) I know that was kind of a long explanation, but the key takeaway is that smaller goals that allow us to become more prepared to tackle our big goals are actually really necessary. Calling them side quests does does them a disservice. Um, Only experts can really stick to the main quest and come out on top. Most humans need some breathing room. Calling things side quests doesn't necessarily make sense when they're more of just they're kind of expansion quests. Yeah. 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 Well, it's, it's, it's a fitting in that, right, is it's a reference to gaming and we're going to be talking about gaming, but also, you know, how we're tying it to real life and, you know, the importance of all that. So it, it's fitting. And I think we're going to talk about both. Like we want to be able to talk about many things, mainly focused on gaming, but just, life in general and you know whatever else so it's good it's good um you talked a little bit about i think kind of like why you gamed you talked more so about your t- uh streaming but i feel mm-hmm. like we should you know talk about what got us into gaming you know, why we started the gaming so uh, i could start yeah. you could go first whichever you'd like no rock and roll Rock and roll, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> I had the gamer gene from the very beginning. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad was a, a gamer. Um, ironically, he was friends with some of the people who worked on uh, Doom and like who that helped create Doom. Oh, very cool. Yeah, and like. <laughs> Uh, he knew a bunch of people who, like, really loved that game and played that game. And he was just like, it's not for me. <laughs> he didn't, he wouldn't play it. <laughs> Which I think it's so funny. I was like, all right. <laughs> okay, kind of kind of a dick move, but you do you. Uh, <laughs> so, like, when I came to be his little bean, he... Mm-hmm. Uh, would play Hexen, which I don't think was age appropriate. Like, I would sit with him while he would play it, and we'd, like, play it together. <laughs> totally not age appropriate. Nothing we did together uh, was age appropriate, to be honest. Oh, that sounds really <laughs> bad, actually. <laughs> not like that. Wait, wait, wait. I was a very sick child. I was home a lot. I was very sick. He was the one I was with. So we would watch, He, you know, he can only handle so much cartoons. So we watched a lot of monster movies and sci-fi movies and horror movies and played these things that I probably shouldn't be playing. Like some of the things, like if my mom knew, she'd be like, Hmm. But he always thought it was good, and he always, like, we'd always have the conversation of, you know, this is okay, this is not okay, what's good, what's bad, and he always used a lot of this as, like, a teaching experience for me, and being like, you know, you gotta stick up for people, Hmm. and, like, when something is wrong, like, you gotta say something, you can't just let it happen, so he's 
what got me into gaming. Um, we, yeah, he's the reason I have all my games. He bought all my games. I, ironically, I dug some of them out. These were, like, my games I played as a kid. Aww. Jurassic Park, Preschool, Clifford. I don't really remember Clifford as much, but Arthur. Arthur was a go-to. My mm -hmm. Harry Potters. I loved, mm -hmm. I pulled out some of my original Nancy Drews. Oh, I lost them. Mm -hmm. The first one we had was the uh, the second one. The Haunted Mansion. Message in a Haunted Mansion. Um, he got me started. But also kind of what kept me going is... Uh, my best friend, her mom, was my daycare lady. So I spent a lot mm -hmm. of time there. And they had... Game Boys and Game Cubes, and let me tell you, we played the <laughs> absolute poop out of Pokemon Crash Bandicoot. Um, she got us a uh, oh, what are they called? The Mary Kate and Ashley Sweet Sixteen. Oh and my like goodness! A bunch of things, and yeah, I don't know. He, <laughs> I never really talked about this with other people because like it was weird to be a girl and like play games when I was younger. So like I didn't talk about mm. it, but. He he always kept me interested. He was always getting me fun games to play. Um, Sansara is a is a very niche game. I don't know <laughs> if many people know about, but that was like something we would play together and did play together for like many years of my life. And he got me Skyrim, your favorite game. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and like. Middle school, I started to do more online gaming. I started RuneScape. I was a mm. baller in RuneScape, let me tell you. Heck yeah, baby. <laughs> and then kind of wow. And that's kind of like when I started paying attention to Twitch mm. and stuff. And yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like that's the basics of it. <laughs> so what would you say was the most... I guess, impactful than game that you played as a kid. Ooh. Two. Sansara, which if you've never played it and you can figure out how to get it to play on your computer, I'm going to tell you, you should do it. You're this girl mm. in London and you get freaking kidnapped and transported to this fairy world and you get to like have fairies and duel with the fairies and like fly around. So good. So beautiful. Love the music. Chef's kiss. Mm. And I think that was impactful because that was one of the ways me and my dad always connected, and I always... He's a computer. I'll be honest. He's a computer. Like, there's a reason he works in IT. And so that was definitely, outside of sports, one of our, like, biggest bondings. Both and of then our dads I would work say... in IT. That says a lot about both of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then Nancy Drew, hands down, Nancy Drew and Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. But the Nancy Drew was like having a female character that mm -hmm. I could play and relate to. Like, I had nothing mm -hmm. against male characters. I love them. But it was like someone who was... Oh, um, I, have st I have things against male, male oh. characters. <laughs> That's fine. You, you, you can. <laughs> you tell us. But yeah. And I liked how much you learned... Mm -hmm. And the Nancy Drews. I like how they kind of like picked a theme, really dug down into the theme. And like, I learned so much. I learned how to do so much. I would go up to my dad and be like, oh, guess what I learned today? And he'd be like, yeah, what? <laughs> Morse code. I'm going to send you the SOS <laughs> when I'm in trouble. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> so, definitely. Definitely that. And I feel like Nancy also just impacted me as a person. Like, she made me feel like it was okay to be curious and ask questions. Mm. And super nosy, steal things. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay, okay, buddy. <laughs> All right. You know what? It's your turn. You know, you go. <laughs> I did not mean to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I really didn't play games growing up. I, some, I did some, but not like classics. You know, I did educational PC games. I did like Math Blasters. Um, 
So, and oh, Franklin. I don't know if you ever played Franklin games, Franklin the Turtle. Yes. Did you? Mm-hmm. Do you ever play this? You got that type to learn three. Yep. Absolutely. Heck, yes. Heck yeah. But yes, any of those kind of educational games, my parents were all about. Um, so you know, that didn't last super long. Um, as we were growing up, we were, kind of grew out of those fairly quickly. But my mom grew up reading Nancy Drew books. I have some of her books from when she was young that are in my bookshelf with my collection of Nancy Drews that are just so cute. Um, And then she discovered, you know, Nancy Drew games were coming out on CD-ROM. So she gave a few to me and my sister. And we had Treasure in the Royal Tower, Message in a Haunted Mansion, The Final Scene, and Secret of the Scarlet Hand. So those were kind of our core four that we owned and we played a lot and it was so funny replaying those as an adult because (laughs) I remember um I think I I think Haunted Mansion I always found really hard yeah and as a kid just because it has those longer puzzles Mm -hmm. where you have to go and find all of the symbols around the house and I just never did because I didn't think about having them and I mean Scarlet Hand was also really rough as a kid and doing it now I'm just like boop 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 ba doop boop (laughs) just (laughs) pressing buttons um and we went to my sister and I would go to the library and we'd rent other ones so we owned the original or those four and then we went to the library and we're just renting other ones and so we would play them for a few hours and then inevitably just walk away from them because we had to go to dinner or something and then uh, forget about them until we had to return them and then we'd have to re-rent them and then we'd have to (laughs) start over again. And so it was just very confusing. Um, I think about that sometimes, like playing through them. Like, how did we do this as a kid? Yeah, Mm -hmm. how did I solve any of these things? Because sometimes as an Mm -hmm. adult, I'm like, whoa. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and I, yeah, designing games for kids that also can work for adults, I'm just very impressed because you do have Mm -hmm. to have kind of, you know, simplistic, but also engaging enough. And because most kids, you know, probably are playing with older siblings or you just want the kids to be pushed to really think, really use their brains. So playing the Mm -hmm. Nancys was really good for that. Other than Nancy Drew, my sister got an Xbox as I was going away to college. It was kind of my parents like, okay, well, your sister's leaving you, so we'll get you an Xbox. Um, (laughs) And so she played Halo, and um, I think at that point we got Skyrim. So... Basically, before I started streaming, before I got my gaming computer, I had played Nancy Drew's two of the Halo game, three of the Halo games, um, Halo 1, Halo 2, and ODST, and Skyrim. (laughs) Those are pretty much the games Mm -hmm. that I knew. I actually have a recommendation for you. I just saw that since you love Skyrim so much... Mm -hmm. So this game came out like a month after Skyrim, which I think is why it didn't get as much of the recognition as it should have. Like, I think it's a very underrated game, and that is Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning. Now, they remastered it. Mm -hmm. So uh, they remastered it because the company was finally able to buy the rights to it. I'm hoping they're finally going to turn it into the franchise it should have been. Uh, and they just did a new DLC quite uh, quite a few months ago, actually. <laughs> it was like, I think it came out September, October, November. They had done a DLC. But like this, it's a little more fanciful, maybe, than mm. Skyrim. But like, it's, it's so, it's so beautiful. I think it's so beautiful. It's so much fun. I love the story. Like... These were the games I was nerding out in. It was like, what, 2011, 2012? Mm -hmm. I think Skyrim was like December 2011, and this was like Mm -hmm. January 2012. Like, this is what I was playing. 
until I think Witcher 3 came out, and then that's like that's what I was playing. So the Witcher series, I briefly played a little bit of my fiance's brother's copy of The Witcher 3. <laughs> so I want to get okay. back into it because I know people really like it and I feel like it would be kind of my vibe. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, if you like Skyrim, I mean, it's not like Skyrim, but it is like Skyrim in a sense. Like mm-hmm. it's definitely, yes. I stand Geralt. He's probably <laughs> like top of my list of characters I wish I could marry. Okay. And also, when they picked, I don't remember his, Henry Cavill. Henry Cavill, when they picked mm-hmm. him for The Witcher, I was like, mm-hmm. Superman can't play him. Oh, heck no. And then I watched the first series, and I was like, you know what? I'll marry you, Henry Cavill. It's fine. He and he's is... the low-key nerd, too, which makes it so much better. Yeah. His... Well, Go ahead, I'm sorry. His fav- My favorite character he played... Um was in the movie Stardust. I don't know if you've seen that movie. It is my okay. favorite movie. Um, but mm. he plays this kind of smarmy it's a it's it's a small part. It's a tiny little part, but you would not recognize it was him except you can see his jaw and you're like, hmm, I recognize that jaw, but he is Oh mm-hmm. <laughs> I know that <laughs> But he is just kind of kind of the cool guy around town, around the um, the town the main character grows up in before he goes off into the magical world. So he's supposed to be like what everyone wants to, what the main character wants to be before he goes and kind of comes into his own. Um, anyway. Right. It's a tiny little part. He plays it delightfully. You cannot recognize him. He was very young. <sighs> it's so good. He's, he's a beautiful man. An absolutely beautiful <laughs> man. He built a PC. He built a gaming PC. Can you believe that? Yeah, so did I. I he's watched the video of it and I was like, oh man. <laughs> it's not that he's special. It's just fun to see a huge actor in Hollywood being a gaming nerd, okay? No, I love that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, I think we were going to talk about um, kind of our favorite types of games as we at least are typically playing through. Um, you know, for me, I'm playing a lot sure, of point sure. and click mystery games. Um, of course, Nancy Drew, Sherlock Holmes, Agatha Christie games, a lot of very story based Um so that's kind of where I like to live as opposed to first person shooter or anything a little more actiony. Um, Hades was very much mm-hmm. one of my favorite games that I go back to again and again. You know, I've done Sims, but yeah, anything where there's a bit of a story. If there's not a good story, I'm immediately out. Do not care. Not having it. <laughs> Mm-mm. Yeah, I'm. <laughs> I play too many games. I play a wide play variety. A lot of games. I like <laughs> to dip my toe in everything. I like I like mystery point and click. I, you know, so my brain is being intellectually stimulated. Mm-hmm. I love horror because I like to be scared. Actually, I don't know. I really actually have no idea why I love horror. I just know I love it, and I'm obsessed with it, and I have been my whole life. Hmm. I freaking love sci-fi, anything sci-fi. Is this because of the movies that your dad and you watched when you were little? Honestly, I think so. They Mm -hmm. they probably seriously tainted me as a child. Like, if we really Mm -hmm. think about it, yes. Mm -hmm. And, like... Like, the TV series that were my childhood, like, when people say, like, Arthur and stuff, I'm like, <laughs> mine were <laughs> Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel, yes, love. Xena the Warrior okay. Princess, Hercules, Firefly, like, <laughs> all these things. I'm like, yes, I want to be them. <laughs> so, I feel like, I feel like games are a good way to be someone or something you're not. 
mm. in real life. Like, I love Sea of Thieves because I can be a pirate. Because obviously, you know, I can't really be a pirate in real life. But you know what? For a few hours, I can be a pirate and I can pillage and thieve and tell people to walk the plank and mm-hmm. sail. Sailing's mm-hmm. fun. I actually really enjoy that. Um, yeah. I actually did not used to like FPS games. Like, I didn't hmm. mind, like, watching people play them, but I didn't really like them. And I didn't get the attraction of liking them. But as I've... I don't know if it says I've gotten older or play more games. I've started to like them more. I've started to like... I think it's a comfort level. And trash talking. Yes! Yes! I, I agree. As I've become more confident in myself as a gamer and in my skills, I like I like those games. And pitting Mm -hmm. my skills against other people. And the trash talking. For (laughs) me, I can play first person shooter. And I can do some of those things. If I'm playing with friends. Or I'm playing with my fiance. Because as long as I'm not like trying to go at it alone. You guys play through Halo. mm -hmm. Halo, yes. Fine. We're doing Resident Evil together. You know, just like anything where it's kind of a lot of action going on at once if I can have at least one other person there with me Mm -hmm. then I'm willing to kind of do it you know as a little pack but doing it alone is just really daunting and I just don't have as much fun the whole reason I like to play kind of the point and click in the story is because I like being immersed in it I like being able to talk about it. I like not having to necessarily have all the quick time events or the reactions so that I can be thinking through and kind of going slower and logical and be talking to chat and whatever about the decisions I'm making and working Mm -hmm. my way through rather than just, um, you know, bang, bang, bang. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I get that. I don't play it like Valorant and stuff. I never play that alone. I like to always duo queue. So if someone starts talking mad, sh- I got my friend who's like, <laughs> you know what? She's rock star. What are you going to do about it? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. I would say, like, my favorite favorite, like, if I had to pick one besides horror, is uh, survival and, like, co-op mm. kind of survival games. Or even just chill. Like, Stardew co-op was mm-hmm. amazing. 10 out of 10. But, like, I love mm-hmm. that. The building, having to be, or being able to build, like, my own place, being able to experience it with other people, and having story. Like, having all three of those things. Mm Mm-hmm. That's it. That's prime. Yeah, being able to create, and so that's why I enjoy Sims, and definitely Stardew, because being able to, yeah, be on that kind of creator side able to use creativity, able to lay things out. And I don't know if that's just like the millennial in us who's just like, I don't know if I'm ever going to have a house and be able to, you know, do all of these things IRL. But, you know, we can do them online. We can show them off to friends. We can talk about them. We can, you know, kind of play house in a way. I feel like for me, it's, I like to be stimulated in a lot of different ways like I would like my brain to be used in a lot of different ways so like being able to be creative being Mm -hmm. able to think and like critical think and problem solve um or sometimes just sitting back and like taking in the experience and like being in the experience I just like a lot of stimulation I guess (laughs) I don't know I think that's also why I play such a variety of games because I need all the different things yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and for me it's just kind of comforting to play a lot of similar games I'm somebody who likes to rewatch movies over and over Mm -hmm. again and um listen to things listen to you know podcasts that I know and like I'm happy to try new things but there's always you know the the um, concern, I guess, that maybe it won't be as good as everyone's saying, so as long as I can just stick with something that I know is going to be good and true and something that I know I'm going to enjoy. And so, 
Yeah. Right. Sometimes sticking with that is just a comfort level. Yeah. So I think playing with friends, you know, it increases that comfort level because it's like, well, even if I'm not necessarily having fun doing the thing, at least I'm going to have fun with friends. Right. Yeah. True. I never thought about that. But you, now that you say it, I'm like, yeah, okay. I've, that's, <laughs> I've definitely done that. Yeah. I'm really interested in uh, psychology and especially motivation. I was taking business classes in college um, about motivation. Um, I'm in HR. That's what I do. And so understanding what motivates people uh, in work to keep working at their job, to keep working at the company, to, I guess, work in general, to work in the field. That's really interesting to me, but also definitely what motivates different types of gamers. And just like what we were talking earlier with a child playing Nancy Drew versus an adult playing Nancy Drew, what sort of rewards you can fit in there to keep motivating the child to keep playing even if they get stuck or for the adult to keep playing even if it's too easy. I just find so fascinating and I'm so impressed with game designers who are able to design for all of those different levels. I I love that stuff too. I loved all of my uh, psychology and like sociology classes anytime. Okay, I know I said I'm a teacher, unqualified because when I went to college, I went for mechanical engineering and general business management. Totally other side of the spectrum of what I'm doing now. I <laughs> I wanted to be a project manager with uh, engineers, but there's that's a whole other story. That's a whole other thing. But yeah, whenever we talk about that in my business classes or like, because uh, I was general business management, we took like one to two classes in all of the different categories. So accounting, financing, marketing, operations, all of that. Like we were essentially taught to be little baby entrepreneurs. Like we could, you know, start up a business. But like, you know, like marketing and stuff, whenever we would talk about that and the psychology of things and, you know, how you attract people or like what makes them see something and think, I want to get that or, oh, I like this, you know, I love that. I love that so much. It's very fascinating mm -hmm. how people work, how our brains work. So I I hope we can do many podcasts on that kind of stuff. I know one of the um, goals we have for this podcast, or not necessarily goals, but future, future segments, future ideas, we want to be talking with um, other people in the gaming industry on all different sides, from selling, from marketing to actual game design, mm -hmm. to story creation, other streamers, other players in general, and talking to them about um, different aspects of that, because I think we're both really curious about yes. all sorts of different pieces of putting a game together and trying to encourage people to get into it, especially on the indie side. Having like kind of like I feel like it would be like a sub series because I don't know if it'd be like mm. every you know episode but mm -hmm. like yes I would definitely love to be able to do that and to interview or have for some of them like a day in the life of you mm -hmm. know whatever they are I think that'd be truly interesting and to learn more about like what goes on behind the scenes like what all goes into making a game and the decisions they make and how they make these decisions so yeah I'm excited yeah. for that. <laughs> One day. Like you said, we have a lot of learning ahead of us on this journey um, about a lot of different aspects of the technology and gaming industry outside of our own experiences, which we're really excited mm -hmm. about. Yeah, because it's huge. Like, gaming culture, gaming industry. It Like, I feel like to everyday people and stuff like when you talk about it, when you think about it it doesn't seem like it's that big but like when you start going there's so much so many different things it it blows my mind like even being a part of it and knowing that every time I actually stop and think about it I'm like wow and the impact it has on so many people's lives mm -hmm. is is crazy yeah my parents are not into gaming at all at least my mom is really not my dad somewhat gets into it but uh, my mom really has no idea anything about games um, and 
I was trying to explain to her um, about another mom who plays MMOs, and my mother could not get it through her brain. She was just like, adults do this? It's for adults? <laughs> I was like, oh no. One of my favorite streamers is, is 40 years old. He plays Sea of Thieves, and <laughs> every time he says his age, I'm like... <laughs> Like, I'm sorry. I'm not laughing at him. Like, I don't think it's not for old people, but I kind of chuckle and I'm like, that's going to be me when I'm 40. <laughs> I'll, still be, I'll still be playing games. Living my best life. That cracks me up also because, I mean, 40 is young, you know. Um, the mom who plays all right. these MMOs is 60, and she's been playing them for 10 years, and so... Yeah, there is just so many, because at this point, because when did video games start coming out originally? If we're not including arcade games, I feel like the first was like 80s, right? 70s okay. or 80s? Because I feel like 60s, 70s is when we started getting, you know, like arcade and like Pac-Man mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah, so at this point, you know... The vast, vast majority of adults have grown up with some semblance of video games. And the idea that, oh, they're just for, you know, 21 and under <laughs> is just so absurd. But to people who truly don't interact with people who game at all, I mean, and I really didn't... Obviously, my fiancé and his friends game, and I was doing marginal gaming, but I really had no idea, truly until I joined Twitch, of what on earth was going on. <laughs> and I know there's plenty of other communities out there, because I'm not even on Reddit. Um, I know there's Same. so much out there <laughs> about gaming in general that I just haven't even gotten close to. Okay, I think it's time. I think we we do it. The tea, tea Party segment. Okay. So basically, because um, our whole podcast is about quote-unquote side quests and about objectives that are very important to someone, maybe not to you, but to someone who is the main character in their own story, they're having stuff go on that is very important to them that no one else uh, probably really cares about. And so some of this petty <laughs> drama um, we are going to be uh, sharing with all of y'all in our Tea Party segment. Um, so today's Tea Party is about my apartment drama because this truly just ended, spoiler alert, um, and I'm so excited to have my apartment back. But basically... <laughs> there was plumbing that was going on um or there was plumbing needed to go on for the past two weeks uh some plumbing had broken there was something real gross that was only accessible under my apartment and so no one was doing anything we're just renters so we're not even on the board like we can't really get involved we obviously were talking to our landlord who was honestly not being super helpful sorry bill but, um, name drop, <laughs> name dropped. Um, we love Bill, it's okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we stand, Bill. <laughs> but we ran into um, our neighbor out in the parking lot, and um, we had talked to her a few times before, and she it came out that she is an owner. And she's like the only owner who lives on the premises. And she's like, so it's up to me to determine, you know, if we're going to be paying X, Y, Z. And we were like, amazing. <laughs> do it. Yes, do it. You're going to do it, right? And so, um, she's not gonna do it. because they had arrived. So two weekends ago, um, people had come by and they were like, hey, we need to get under the hatch underneath your pantry so obviously we had to empty out our entire pantry we had to take all of the shelving out um and all of our pantry has been living in our room for the past two weeks um and so they couldn't get in they couldn't get into the pantry because everything was in the pantry so they were like we're gonna make an appointment 
we're going to come back. And we were like, amazing, do that. Um, so we cleared out the pantry that night. They never came back. And we were like, okay, we haven't heard anything. What's going on? And so we ran into her neighbor. She got my number so we could text each other about like whatever shenanigans were going on. And she was just like, great, we have a board meeting uh, in like three hours. So I'll let you know what happens. So she gets to the board meeting. She texts me the next day and she says, the property manager said that we denied them access to our hatch. And my fiance and I were like, <laughs> no, no, that's thoroughly not what happened. Um, and so my fiance then emailed the business management or the property managers and was asking them, Hey, what's, what's going on? Uh, we heard that you guys said we denied you access and they emailed back and said, no, we didn't say that. Oh, and we were just sitting there like, okay, okay. I don't, I don't care. I don't care <laughs> who's lying. I don't care what's going on. And then they were saying that, um, uh, our neighbor was telling or was saying that they were lying about what was underneath, which is not what she was telling us. And so, but, so we were just getting totally conflicting stories from both sides. Um, and we, again, we're like, we don't care. Just somebody has to fix this anyway. Right. And so it ended up that she didn't trust their estimate. And so then we got an outside, we, the board got an outside <laughs> group to come in, do a quote, and do the whole thing. So then she was texting me being like, Hey, I'm going to approve it ASAP. And then like two days later, it did get approved. And then yesterday, um, they were in all day doing pumping and then doing plumbing. And then they were back in this morning to fix and finish everything up. And now my pantry is back and returned to me. And I'm so excited, but I truly do not know who to trust. So, so it wasn't resolved and who lied like who or like oh, where no. the false okay no idea nope interesting but, yeah so so i don't know if there's just like something got lost in translation but um i feel like that would have been a very big loss in translation like those are like right not like even remotely kind of like okay i can no. see where you missed a couple words this was like <laughs> two right. completely different things right yeah yeah because she was saying Interesting. they just said that you denied access and then kind of she left it at that and then they said we didn't say that but they said we weren't telling the truth about what was underneath the apartment and how then you, i know how I know. could you not be telling the truth about what's under the apartment though i know they were like we have pictures and we were like oh we believe you just so you know, there's been a smell. We have been spending the night at my sister's. We have been, I've been going into the office to not be working in there. We've had our air off or yeah, our hot air off. We've had our right. heater off. Um, our electricity bill was $25 because we had no heater going <laughs> for the yeah. last two weeks. Our door has been open. So it's been freezing every time we've been home just to like let things air out. Obviously we've like had our bedroom door closed and other doors mm -hmm. closed to like keep the smell out. Like there was clearly stuff happening and yet no one was doing anything. No one was telling us what was going on. It was just like so annoying. <laughs> So how long did this all take to get resolved? Like, I don't remember. When did this first start happening? So the guys came to try to get into our hatch two weeks ago. But apparently stuff has been starting to go down there for the last six months. And like, oh, it must okay. have just been like frozen in December because... I had been like getting kind of like little smells Whips. like underneath some of the cabinets and I was like, what is happening? But my fiance was never around to smell them. And so it was just like, I don't know, I'm not involved. Right. And so we never really thoroughly investigated it. And I just kind of was like, hmm, okay, whatever. But then other people in the apartment were complaining and then, um, 
yeah even our next door neighbor was like texting me and she was like yeah this smells like super bad today and i was like hmm it sounds like you should approve plumbers but <laughs> i feel like i'm i'm being really dumb right now why it was water right why was water no wait what was it it was not water i regret to tell you oh literally my apartment has been smelling like poop in various levels for oh. the past two weeks oh, oh okay i'm re- i'm sorry i'm maybe i'm dumb i don't know why i thought it was water i was like oh that's even okay Oh, I wish it was water. I thought yeah. it was, like, water, and well, then you're getting, like, the mold and the rot. That's what I thought, but... Mm. Okay. That would also have sucked, absolutely. Oh, yikes. Yikes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's... Because when they first came to tell us, we were kind of like, oh, that would explain some of the weird smells we have sporadically been smelling. But literally then, since they've been here... Like, it has gotten, it had gotten so much worse. Like, yesterday morning, right before they came, it smelled the worst it ever smelled. And I was just like, holy cow. (laughs) Was it just your guys's or was it? It was the problem area was not even our pipes. It was our upstairs neighbor's pipes. It was located, but the, the, um, the area they had to pump was only accessible through our hatch underneath our apartment. So you're getting punished for somebody else's. <laughs> oh, that yeah. makes it so much worse. It's not even yes. like your stench. It's someone else's. Yes. <laughs> My germaphobe. <laughs> oh, no. I. Yeah. It's literally been the worst. <laughs> oh, yikes. Oh, <laughs> yikes. I am so sorry. Ugh. Holy cow. Yeah, but it's hopefully so. It's hopefully fixed now, right? It's fixed. Okay, they took care of it. The property managers were down there today, and they were like, "Nope, they did a really good job." They were like showing us pictures of how clean it was down there. Perfect, perfect. They showed my fiance pictures. I did not look at pictures because I am a lady. Oh, um, of course, <laughs> of course, <laughs> Madame, my bad. But now I'm just like you know paranoid, thinking that I'm smelling things. I would be too. I would be too. I feel like yeah. that's yeah. We have to just like obviously do such a deep clean in the apartment now. So that is my drama. Your drama. Your tea. <laughs> so is it time to talk about side quests? Do you have a favorite side quest, Nen? Wait. Okay. Just wait. Just wait. I know yours is from Skyrim. Yes. Obviously. 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 I feel like it's been so long since I've played Skyrim. I have the remaster, is that what you call it? I really want to play it because I can't play the original because you can't lock your FPS. And uh, <laughs> it like freaks out <laughs> on my computer. And so I have the remastered to be able to play it, but I haven't had a chance to get around to it. I guess, I don't know if you would call these side quests, but like... okay. What I loved about Skyrim was, like, all the little rabbit holes <laughs> you could go down. All the, like, side mm-hmm. cults and people that you could just, like, bury yourself into. I love that. The whole vampire thing or the vampire hunter thing or the, yeah. Child me unknowingly became a vampire. Didn't know you could become yes. a vampire. Didn't know why it happened. Didn't know why yes. people were running from me and trying to kill me. And my poor dad spent like five hours trying to fix it for me. I would Bless his love heart. to become a Skyrim vampire. <laughs> well, I, I didn't. I didn't get it. I didn't understand what it was or what it meant. But now that I get it, I can appreciate it. I have the vampire uh, pack I guess expansion. Mm. Don't know for Sims, and oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I have always done the magic and forgotten that you cannot be a wizard and also a vampire, which I think is very <laughs> rude. Um, so every time I'm just like, oh yeah, I want to start learning magic, and then they're like, great. Well, you do magic now, so you cannot be a vampire. So I've never been a Sims vampire, even though I have it, and it is one of my truly ultimate goals. You should do it. Well, part of it is like. I think in, 
I'm not an expert on Sims games, but I'm pretty sure in some of the past, you could be hybrids. Like, you could do multiple things, but for whatever reason, in Sims 4, they were just like, no. Because I, someone was talking about the new scenario in Sims, or like one of the new scenario things they've been doing. You can be a plant sim. They brought plant sims back. And she was <gasps> talking about how she used to like to be a vampire and a plant sim, and oh like, God. how it like clash because the plant sim needs sun but like the vampire can't go in the sun <laughs> <laughs> and so i yeah yeah i don't know why we don't have hybrids in sims 4 but alas, i am a sims are. player who just like works my sim to the bone i'm always just like girl if you are not up there and like getting T level 10 on every single um, skill. If you're not constantly doing things, what, what are, are you, you doing? doing? You're a waste of my time. And I think it's a problem because I only have one sim going at a time. Like, I think I need to make a family and then just, like, pick people up as I want to, rather than yeah. just hyper-focused in on one person and being like, mm-mm, nope, not like that, stop that. <laughs> I definitely overmanage my Sims, and my sister has mm -hmm. always judged me. And she's like, "I don't get why you feel the need to tell them all these things. Like you can let them live." And I'm like, "Well, you kill your what's Sims." The point? <laughs> exactly. What's the point? <laughs> Very true. What is your favorite side quest, though? Please tell us your Skyrim side quest. We're ready. Okay. Okay. okay so my favorite Skyrim side quest is called "Laid to Rest." And it is the one where you find this burned out house and um, you hear about the town that uh, this man's wife and daughter burned to death and then he married another woman the next day. Oh! And so you find this little ghost girl and she's just yep. like, I want to play hide and seek, me, 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 me. And then um, it turns out the woman who married... Um, the father is a vampire and so she's like you know done some mind control or whatever and she um uh vampired <laughs> the wife i guess um, yeah no she just murdered her i guess um <laughs> oh aren't you saying she turned her into a vampire no i'm saying she no. Oh, then she just murdered her. She okay. murdered her. She chomped yeah. her jugular. Okay. She chomped her. Yeah, she chomped her. They're cute. Mm -hmm. uh, but she chomped the wife, and they, like... And the vampire's uh, assistant vampire, I guess, tried to turn the child into a vampire. And so the, they had to burn down the house to, like, cover up those bodies, basically. Yep. Anyway, so then you have to fight the vampire, and it's just this whole thing. But it's just such a well laid little story this mm -hmm. little drama where you're like oh you have to solve this murder crime and then you have to do this other thing and it just really just lays out from beginning to end it has a bit of tragedy it has a little bit of humor and just like ridiculousness in it um it's just personally i think it's perfect well, and it's more than just the classic side quest, please go get me ten chickens, you know? I But mm -hmm. when you start describing I know, I know what you're talking about. I remember mm -hmm. the burnt house and the little girl. I play it every single time in Skyrim. <laughs> every single time, I'm just like, whoop, gotta do it. Hunt it down. You're like, this gotta is Gotta go get the ghost. Mm -hmm. And free the little girl ghost, and it's just a whole thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. and like, thinking about it too right and the whole thing of our podcast like what a joke that that's a side quest because like that's like a big deal <laughs> for someone that's what i'm saying like... <laughs> for four people in that town like that is a main monumental quest like the whole yeah trying to hunt down like who murdered this what this woman and child and then he married her and then this whole thing happened so it's just like drama 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 <laughs> it's a whole thing like you could make an entire game just focused on that and that's i mean it's so perfect because it's a full story beginning to end mm -hmm. and yep. you as your character have just wandered in and are put in charge of the investigation because that's what you're good at but, yeah. 
wrong place, wrong time, right place, right time. Who knows? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that you get closure. I like when you do get closure. I don't yes. like open-ended. <laughs> well, and there are so many Skyrim side quests that are like that. Anything yeah. about love where you get to say, okay, well, I can decide if I want to give this guy's letter to her or this guy's letter to her, and I can kind of choose my own adventure. Yep. Um, yeah. And, you know, from her perspective, she's like, well, I've got these two lovers, and this one's being nice to me, but then this one's really interesting and so on and so forth and but i think my favorite like short little kind of side quests in skyrim are when you are running around trying to steal beer for people <laughs> and they're like mm, i would like an ale go acquire one thank you and you give it <laughs> to him one. and then he like gives you something <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just it's, fun it's... but it is his primary objective. Yep. Must yep. find beer. You have found a helper who will bring you beer. Excellent. Who doesn't want a helper who will bring you beer? I mean, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> we are truly in their world. <laughs> <laughs> we are just so excited um, to be doing this podcast, to be talking about um, everything tech gaming, women in gaming, getting to know each other and ourselves better. Um, we would love if you have anything to contribute to the tea party, send it in. We've got no side quests at gmail.com. You can find us at no side quests on Instagram and Twitter and uh, YouTube. Yep. Links, links will be in the description. I'll make sure to put that all down there. Yeah. Yeah, we have been nerding out about this. Like, every time we talk about it, we get all, like, <laughs> like giggly. And, like, we've, we've been power brainstorming and thinking about it and having, honestly, having so much fun. And, mm -hmm. like you said, no side quests pretty much on everything. YouTube is, I don't believe in side quests, but all the other stuff was pretty much no side quests. We'll put links in the description. Um... You can be found. Yes, I can be found at uh, sweetie underscore potat, S W I S W E E T I E <laughs> underscore P O T A T. <laughs> Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, questionably you <laughs> Not Instagram. Okay, Twitch, Twitter. Just Twitch and Twitter. Twitch and Twitter. I can be found at. <laughs> Ninya Adamas N-E-N-Y-A A-D-A-M-A-S I'll put all those links down below uh, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram YouTube, I'm really terrible at all of my social media, but you know what? One day, we're getting there we I also... immediately forgot how to spell sweetie <laughs> <laughs> 10 out of 10 We also have a Discord that you can go in and I will give your thoughts uh, Leave a review I think is what they are, like with your thoughts, any opinions, things you want us to work on. Yes, definitely be sending in your drama. The tea. We want the tea for our segments. And I think I think that pretty much covers it. We don't really have an outro besides that. <laughs> outro coming soon. Coming soon. But we love you guys and uh, we hope you have an amazing week. Yep. And we'll catch you in episode two for Nancy Drew, our biggest passion. Episode <laughs> 2, Nancy Drew. Truly, truly, truly. our biggest passion. <laughs> Alright. Bye-bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>